Whenever you're planning a change, whether in your own life or in the life of another man, the target of change is so important. Now, in this life, change can either happen around a man or inside a man. But all the time, the changes that happen around your life is as a result of the changes that has occurred within you. This is because every man's surrounding is a reflection of the quality of his mind. I have seen that some people, in their attempt to fix a challenge, begin to address the consequences instead of the cause. The foundation of everything is really the heart of the matter. So, in dealing with any person or any issue, go for the source or the cause and not the effect. And as men, the foundation of our failures or success in this life stems from the mind. And that is the reason why what happens in the mind of a person is what determines his successes or failures. So, when you want to succeed in this life, check the quality of your mind. God seeks after the mind of man and Satan also. And as men, we usually deal with our fellow men to get their minds to agree with what we want or suggest. Therefore, the real battle of every man is not what goes on around him, but what happens on the seat of his mind. A story is told of a doctor who had two patients, and in their history, one had cancer and the other did not. But one day, these two patients happened to visit the doctor for review of their health condition. But something happened which I reason I would want to share with you in this story. The doctor requested further tests to be conducted by these patients and in the communication of their report, the doctor mistakenly interchanged their lab results and gave the cancer patient's report to the patient who never had cancer initially and gave the cancer-free patient's report to the one who had the cancer and indicated that her cancer is no more, though that was in the truth. She had simply been given the wrong report. And the doctor gave the cancer patient's report to the cancer-free patient and started to put her on therapy. To cut the story short, the non-cancer patient began to develop cancer as communicated to her by the doctor when she received that report. She kept thinking about the cancer and began to take the drugs for it. The other patient who truly had the cancer but was mistakenly told that her cancer was no more accepted the report. She stopped taking the drugs and began to think and live as a cancer-free patient. And her cancer was nowhere to be found in some few couple of months. Now, to so many of us, the realities and the experiences that holds our lives are not anything but the lies we've believed and settled in our minds over time. This is what has resulted in whatever situation we find ourselves many times. Most people are living their lives on lies. They have become slaves of wrong reports and suggestions. Their mind is the battlefield. And all the time we either lose or we win the challenges of life through the mind. When you conceive defeat in your mind, you have already lost the battle, even before the fight begins. And when you win the battle in your mind, you will definitely win on the battlefield. So, the real battlefield of life is not on the outside, it's not in the workplace, but in the mind. When the wrong thoughts feel and dominate your thinking, that is exactly what your life will reflect on the outside. Therefore, when you want to change your life, change the way you think, change the way you see yourself, change the way you see others, change the way you think about money, change the way you think about prosperity. Change the way you think about any situation you're struggling in. You cannot accomplish more than you've accomplished in your mind. Therefore, the way to get rid of wrong thoughts is to replace them with the truth of God's word. In the book of Proverbs, the 23rd chapter, the 7th verse, the Bible states emphatically that as he thinks in his heart, so is he. If you think you can do it, 
you will receive the strength to pursue. If you think you cannot, you receive the fear to stop it. A wise man once said, He who says he can and he who says he cannot, they are both correct. All of these happens in the mind. The Bible illustrates a passage concerning the temptation of Jesus in the wilderness. And in the account of the temptation, one may think that when he was being tempted of the devil and questions were being asked him, it was a physical devilish encounter standing before him and asking him those questions. But you need to understand that all that was happening to Jesus was happening in his mind. There were thoughts that were being suggested to him by the devil to see whether he would obey or not. Just like each one of us constantly are faced with the thoughts to decide on. So, Jesus' temptation was in his mind. But the Bible says that whenever those thoughts came to him, he would rebuke the devil by referencing to scriptures. I want you to understand that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And the only way these forces war against us is to capture and dominate our mindset. The devil is never concerned about your flesh. He's not bothered about what you have. He's simply concerned about your faith and the mindset you have towards God and his word. Because that is where your power and your victory lies. And he knows that when you lose your faith and your mind, all other things will fall along. So, he is more concerned about your mind than your physical possessions. When you look through the, the episodes carefully, there is more emphasis on shaping our thoughts and the renewal of our minds. Such as in Romans, the 12th chapter, the second verse, when the Bible says that you should not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. So that by testing, you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. It says in Colossians 3 verse 16, that let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom as you teach and admonish one another, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your heart. The devil always comes with his lies and suggestions. So, he tells you things like, you can't make it. It's not going to work. You are going to die. You are going to fail. But I want you to understand that when these things begin to occur to you, take captive of these things in your mind. For the Bible says that the weapons of our warfare are not the weapons of the world. Instead, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. We tear down arguments and every presumption set up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. The mind, your mind, is a very powerful platform where you have to begin your success or your failures from. And our lives are always moving in the direction of our strongest thoughts. And until your thinking changes, your life cannot change. Are you worried over anything? Your health, your finances, your marriage, your education, your business, your family, your children or your future? Are you filled with negativity, fear, anxiety, doubts? How do you wake up to this day? How did you wake up to see this new day? Yeah, I know things may be difficult, but you know what? God can come through for you. But know that how you think and how you feel creates your state of being. And this is what gives you the power to attract the things you need in your life. What takes hold of your mind is what comes out of your life. You cannot have a positive life with a negative mindset. Therefore, renew your mind with God's spiritual truth. Embrace the reality but think on what is the truth and not on what you see. Science says that every thought pattern creates a new neural pathway through our brain. So here is the task I want to give you. Identify the greatest stronghold that has captivated your mind. 
search for God's truth that demolishes that stronghold. The Bible says that you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Do not become a prisoner to your thoughts. Get up and be determined that you are going to fight again. And if you die while trying, you die. And if you perish, you perish like Esther. But many times we have realized from the word of God that those who dare to confront their problems and who say, if I die, let me die, they never die. But those who never confront their challenge are those who actually get to die, who become the victims of their problems. Therefore, wake up and change the way you think. Win the battle in your mind by taking charge of what you permit into your mind. Move forward, brother. Move forward, sister. Go for the dreams. Go for the success and aim for the greater heights. You can do it. Don't be afraid. Have the I can do it mentality. Say with Paul that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Say that to yourself. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Finally, child of God, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. It is my prayer that as you change the way you think, your life will begin to change in Jesus' name. God bless you.